So it's time to change your oil. This video covers the basics of doing an oil change. Try to schedule any significant repairs or services at least one week ahead of your travel plans. That way, if you have any issues, such as an oil leak, you have a little time to get them resolved. Pull out your owner's manual and refer to the maintenance schedule to know when it's time for that oil change. You'll also need to know which motor oil is recommended by the manufacturer as well as the capacity. Here are some things you'll need. An automotive creeper is optional. Vehicle ramps are extremely handy for raising the front of the vehicle and gaining access to the oil pan and filter. You could use a floor jack instead, but ramps are less expensive. Wheel chocks are used to secure the back tires to prevent rolling. Jack stands are another safety measure. An oil drain pan is a necessity. Buy a good quality motor oil, preferably full synthetic. Make sure you buy enough based on the capacity listed in the owner's manual, as well as matching the oil weight or viscosity. A multi-purpose funnel helps avoid spills. Purchase an oil filter that is appropriate for your vehicle. Oil filter pliers are helpful in removing the old filter if it was over tightened. Some vehicles require the use of a special oil filter wrench. Examples shown are for Toyota and Pontiac. A breaker bar or torque wrench could be useful for this job as well. Replace the oil drain plug and washer if needed. Towels and rags to wipe down and clean up. Industrial gloves help keep the oil off of your hands. A screwdriver set with both Phillips and flathead. And lastly, you'll need a good socket and wrench set, standard and or metric depending on your vehicle. Okay, so let's get started. You'll need to warm up the engine slightly to make the oil flow and drain better. Run the engine for about a minute, or you could just drive the car around the block. You don't want the engine too hot, or the oil could burn you when removing the drain plug. Next, position the ramps directly in front of the tires, making sure they are centered. Very slowly, begin driving up the ramps, keeping a constant forward movement. Try to avoid rolling backwards or driving too far forward and off the ramps. Place all four wheel chocks snug against the rear tires to prevent rolling. As an extra measure of safety, position the jack stands at proper mount points, typically on the body's frame. Consult your owner's manual. Pop the hood and secure the lift bar. Next, remove the oil fill cap. Notice that many car manufacturers now have the recommended oil weight or viscosity printed on the cap. Lay the cap at about a 45 degree angle over the hole. This helps vent the oil, allowing it to flow smoothly and drain better. Oftentimes there is a cover that needs to be removed to expose the oil pan and plug, as well as the oil filter. On this Mazda CX-5, both the drain plug and the oil filter are located side by side. Now position the oil pan underneath the drain plug. Make sure that as the oil drains straight down, the pan will catch it, but also when it first starts to flow in an arc pattern. Find the right size socket for your vehicle's drain plug and then slightly loosen it but don't remove it just yet. This is when you'll want to put on a glove. Now remove the drain plug completely, letting the used oil flow into the pan. Reposition the pan if needed as the flow starts to slow down and go more vertical. This is a good time to clean up and inspect the old drain plug and crush washer. Replace as needed or recommended. When fully drained or barely still dripping, it's time to reinstall the drain plug. Here I just tighten it enough to stop the drip. 
I'll come back later and do a final tightening. Filter pliers make it easy to remove just about any filter that's been over tightened. Ideally, you should be able to remove the filter by hand. Don't forget that the filter itself is full of oil, so be prepared when it finally comes off and have the oil pan positioned accordingly. Wipe down all surfaces with a towel or rag. Next, we'll prepare the new filter for installation. If you happen to keep some spares on hand for more than one vehicle, it can be helpful to write the model on the outside of the box. Many filters will come with a protective film that needs to be removed before installation. In this example, the filter has a rubber seal that will need to get lubricated with fresh new oil. Apply some of the oil to your fingertip and rub it all around the seal until it is completely coated. Once again, wipe down all surfaces. Now install the oil filter by hand, making sure that it turns freely and takes little or no effort to tighten. If there is any resistance, make sure that you're not stripping the threads. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and tighten the drain plug with a socket wrench. Notice how I'm gripping the wrench near the top so I can feel the resistance and avoid over tightening. It's time to add the new oil. Use a funnel to help avoid spills. Initially only add about a quart of oil, then inspect the filter and plug to make sure there are no leaks. Most five quart containers have a transparent section that allows you to see how much oil is inside, measured in quarts and liters. Continue adding oil to the engine, but retain about a quart of the overall capacity. We'll complete the final fill once the vehicle is back on level ground. Slowly remove the oil pan from underneath the vehicle and avoid splashing. Reinstall the cover after you're confident there are no leaks. Let's get the vehicle back on level ground. Remove the wheel chocks, jack stands, and any other remaining tools left underneath the vehicle. Then slowly back off the ramps, making sure there's nothing behind the vehicle as well. With the vehicle now on a level surface, warm up the engine to a normal operating temperature. Then turn off the engine and wait for at least five minutes until the oil has returned to the pan. While you're waiting for the engine to warm up and then cool down, it's a good time to wipe down your tools and get things put away. Dipstick markings can be different between car manufacturers. Refer to your owner's manual if you have any questions. In this example, there are holes to represent minimum and maximum levels. Anything in between these two markings is acceptable. Pull out the dipstick, wipe it clean, and then reinsert it fully. Pull it out again and examine the level. If it is at or below the minimum level, add more oil until it is at or near the maximum level. Do not overfill the engine oil. This may cause damage. Once your oil is at an acceptable level, then reinsert the dipstick fully. Remove the funnel, then reinstall the oil cap, making sure it is properly seated. Wipe down any excess oil that might have gotten on the engine itself. Pour the used oil into the now empty five quart oil container. Pay attention to the oil fill line to make sure that you don't overfill the container. Use only approved containers for recovered oil. Then take it to your city's nearest pollutant collection facility. Walmart Automotive Centers will also recycle used oil. Reset your vehicle's maintenance schedule or service light as outlined in your owner's manual. It can also be useful to reset your A or B trip odometer back to zero as a way to track the miles you've put on your vehicle in between oil changes. Other options include using a vehicle maintenance logbook, a spreadsheet, or even a mobile app to track all services performed. 
Thank you for watching, and I hope this video was relevant and useful to you.